Welcome back to America Right Now. I'm Tom Basili. This week, we passed the six-month mark since Russia invaded Ukraine, and there's no end in sight. Russia and Ukraine have stepped up attacks. This week, Putin ordered a goal of increasing the size of the Russian army by 137,000, bringing its armed forces up to 1.15 million. But can he do that? And what is Zelensky's next move? Let's ask former United States ambassador to NATO and former U.S. special representative to the Ukraine, Kurt Volker. Ambassador, thank you so much for being here as, uh, as we mark this moment. Um, according to the Ukrainian government, a total of 46,000-plus Russian military personnel have been killed. About 2,000 tanks are said to have been destroyed. Russia um, has underperformed here. And again, th those are unverified. Um, but the Ukraine is now showing signs of also now going on offense. How do you assess this conflict six months well, in? Well, that's exactly right. And the fact that Putin is now trying to recruit another 137,000 soldiers, uh, that means that they know that they have lost a lot. And when you put a figure out there like 46,000 killed, think about the number of wounded on top of that who are now no longer in combat. So the Russians have really done very, very poorly. Uh, they are no longer in a position to advance further into Ukraine. They've kind of exhausted their offensive capability. And that's allowing the Ukrainians to use some of these precision-guided, long-range artillery that we've provided in order to hit the Russian logistics. And they're mm -hmm. taking out ammunition, fuel, food. It's going to be very hard for the Russians to sustain their forces as far into the field as they are, especially and in the winter. Ambassador, do you think that Putin at this point, given population declines, given, you know, poor morale, do you think that Putin, Putin can actually meet that goal without conscripting men in Crimea or occupied areas of Ukraine? Well, he, he is conscripting people in Crimea and occupied parts of Ukraine, but he has not introduced a general mobilization in Russia. And I think if he is avoiding doing that because he knows it would be very unpopular and would create political instability mm. back home. So they've gone to yeah. they've done things like going to prisons and trying to get prisoners to volunteer. They've gone to the non-Russian regions of Russia in order to get people from there. Uh, but they're getting more and more desperate to try to, to fill the forces. And yeah. even if they do get numbers, these will not be trained recruits. That's these right. will be green people just starting out. Both sides kind of need a breakthrough here, it, it seems. Probably Ukraine more than Russia, but, but a stalemate situation kind of impacts both of them. Do you believe that Ukraine will launch an offensive here in the early fall? And obviously, as we get closer to, to the, the winter, things get very problematic in trying to mobilize yeah. military forces there. Yeah. So first off, I think Ukraine already has launched an offensive. It just doesn't look like the Russian offensive. The Russians are using pounding artillery and then trying to roll forward with tanks. That's not what the Ukrainians are doing. The Ukrainians are being much smarter, uh, more precise, more surgical, if you will. They're going after Russia's ability to supply and sustain its forces, taking out bridges, taking out roads, taking out rail lines, taking out ammunition depots. And this is going to make it increasingly difficult for the Russian forces to stay in the field. And then when the winter comes in, uh, Ukrainians are on their home turf. They'll have yeah. supplies, they'll have logistics. The Russians are overextended. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about that Zapranitsia uh, nuclear power plant. We had 25 non-proliferation experts who served in both Republican and Democrat administrations. They've now sent a letter to Biden saying you have to get the IAEA in there. Your thoughts on the danger and what should be done to try and safeguard the, the whole region uh, from yeah. from the misuse of that facility. Well, well, first off, what the Russians are doing is incredibly reckless. Uh, they are storing military equipment at this power plant. They are firing weapons from there. They've set fires around there. This is incredibly reckless, and it could spell a, a nuclear radiation disaster for millions of people if something goes wrong. The whole reason this is an issue is because Russian forces are where they shouldn't be. They're occupying parts of Ukraine, including this part of Ukraine, where the power plant is. If they got out of there, the Ukrainians would secure it, they would protect it, they would get the right kind of technical experts in. The fact that the IAEA is even having to argue to do this in Russian-occupied territory is remarkable. 
All right, we're going to have to leave it there. But Ambassador Kurt Volker, as we, we mark this grim anniversary, we appreciate your, your insights, and I'm sure we'll be speaking again as this conflict rolls on. Yeah, thank you so much.